good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another Sunday night in the Podding Shed. It is the 22nd of May, 2022. I still haven't had my hair cut, I know. Um, we've got to get it done very, very soon, and then I can shave this off as well. Uh, how are we all doing? Now, today, I want you to share some of your cost-saving recipes. Basically, we're going for this 30p mill idea that's been floated around. Uh, so please do share some of your ideas. Uh, before that, we'll go through what I've been up to over this last week. I've got quite a few stories to tell you on that front. But first, let's see if anybody is actually out there. So we have got Ballycillian. Good evening to you. Turbo streamers out there, good evening to you. Uh, Philly SPB, good evening to you. Uh, do, 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 scrolling down, Adrian is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. I've missed a few there. Sorry, it suddenly jumped. Uh, where have we got Richard Golden is out there. Good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Kate Spratt is out there. Good evening, Veg Army. Hope you are all well. Oracle is out there. Good evening to you. Our grave gas. Evening, everyone. I'm looking forward to this evening chats. More relaxing than out in today's heat. It has been a warm one today, hasn't it? This weekend has been warm, actually, hasn't it? Uh, Anna Jones is out there. Good evening to you. Uh, Ian Beddows is out there. No sound. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I'm looking around and it says there's sound going out. Uh, sorry, I've just seen Adrian say there's no sound. Can anybody else hear me? Um, let, let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure sound is going out because it says it is here. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Stuart Jackson, good evening to you. Uh, oh, it's okay. Okay, the sound is okay now. Uh, Oracle, oh, yeah, I've said Oracle. Grove Veg UK, watching in my allotment garden. Cannot bring myself in yet. Indeed, one day, maybe next weekend, I will do a live from the allotment. Uh, Rebecca is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, Digwell is out there saying loud and clear here. So is Hargrave Gas. Sound is perfect. All good here. Um, okay, excellent. So the sound is working. I never know. The sound is the one thing I cannot keep an eye on very well when I go live. But I, I do my best with what I have available. So keep letting us know in the comments if you're out there and also what you've been up to over this last week. It's been very changeable weather this week, hasn't it? We've had quite a dulge, deluge of rain this week, which has been very, very welcome and much, much needed. Um, Jenny, H oh, Jenny Hallett has joined. Good evening to you. Um, it filled up the water butts quite nicely. We were talking, was it last week, about water and, and what have you. So uh, much, much needed rain we've had this week. I've been down on the allotment doing bits and pieces. Friday. Now, Friday, this is going to make I, well, it made me laugh and a few others. I had an email from our council about one half or the top half of my plot. My, for those that don't know, my allotment is actually two half plots, but they're two halves of the same plot. And one of the rules they have is that 75% has to be cultivated. And they do an inspection, which starts in May, and they did an inspection last week. And they thought that my um, allotment wasn't cultivated to 75%. And they sent me an email asking if I was okay and everything was hunky-dory, etc., etc. And I sent back that, yeah, I'm fine. I think... What's gone wrong is that they are looking at my green manures that I've been growing and thinking that they are weeds. The council came back to me and saying, what are green manures? They never heard of them. So I've educated them on that and they seem quite happy with that. It always makes me laugh when that happens. Anyway, that was Friday during the day. When I got home that night, I had a big plant out. Uh, it was my wife's birthday Friday, but we were going away Friday night. So uh, I, when I got home from work, I quickly had a big plant out. We've got tomatoes outside. We've got uh, just basically planted up. We've got pak choy and lettuce in a little, little area by the grapevines. We have got spinach gone in. We have got so many plants now that the garden is starting to come to life. And it's rather, rather 
Well, that's what I've got to say. Yesterday, I couldn't do anything because, as I said, it was a wife's birthday, so I took her out for the day. Uh, but today, I went down the allotment and I've cleared out all the green manures as per this conversation I had with the council. It does make me laugh, though. It does make me laugh, though. Uh, and I've, I've planted up some Brussels sprouts and some cabbages. I've got areas ready for sweet corn. Sweet corn isn't quite there, but by next week, I think it will be. Um, and... What else did I do? Oh, the hugel culture bed. I've completed that. That's ready for planting now. Um, in fact, I planted some cabbages into it. For those that don't know what hugel culture is, it's the use of basically wooden branches to act as like a wick to supply. I mean, you cover the wood in uh, compost and it acts as like a, a supply of water, a sponge. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing how that works. And that's up and running. I've never done it before, so I'm not talking too much about it, but looking forward to seeing how that quite works. Uh, what else did I do? I think that is about it. Uh, a lot of time spent clearing out more and more weeds. So, yes, been a busy one down on the allotment and at home this weekend. So, uh, what's been coming in on the chat? Kate Spratt, been on the plot today, got my poly tunnel sorted and tomatoes pot in. My first tunnel, so I'm hoping I get this right. So hot in there, though. Loads of beans planted out too. Also got lingonberry, think Ikea, and honeyberry bushes for the plot. Yes, lingonberry. Yes, they do lingonberry juice, don't they, in Ikea? Um, yeah, funny enough, I was in my greenhouse earlier today, and it is pre getting pretty warm in there, pretty warm. But my greenhouse at home particularly is really coming into its own, so it's, it's good to see things are moving on. Stuart Jackson is straight in there. My low-cost meal, stinging nettle soup, one onion, one potato, a knob of butter, plus the top four leaves of a nettle, plus a veg stock cube. We made it with the children at school this week, and it went down quite well. Oh, that does sound nice. I do quite like stinging nettle soup. Ian Bellows, it's quite cool up here tonight, but the heavy rain has stopped now. We've had beautiful sunshine the last two days, blazing hot sunshine. Um, so, all good here. Um, Graham Arnold has joined. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Uh, Jenny Hallett, I have been planning which veg is going in each pot slash container and the companion planting to go with it. A few experiments planned for the tomatoes, sweet potatoes, cucumber and melons. Now, funny enough, I, th I can't remember if we have done the crops in pots chat, but I'm, I'm scheduling that in for next week, as I believe it was you that mentioned it crops in pots so hopefully next week we get a bit of information on that turbo stream this week has mainly been about repairing his shed and a test of his new streamer uh how did the streamer work out i know we've got photos coming up a bit later of your shed uh kate spratt saying happy birthday to amanda thank you very much now the shed is finished i can concentrate on the actual gardening on the plot excuse me Yes, it's always, always busy. It always feels good to really start getting projects out of the way and gardening on the plot, doesn't it? Toby Stream says his new streamer works a treat too. That's the important thing. That's the important thing. I've got to get my streamer down in the allotment tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, Kerry Nagel, hope I pronounced your name right. Lovely to see you. Today, I potted up some chilies and peppers. Planted out my leeks too. Funny enough, I was looking at my leeks today and thinking I've got just a spot of where they could go. I was going to pop them in the after the first early potatoes come out, but I've realised I've got a little bit of area where the garlic is. I can probably squeeze my leeks in, which I'm going to do. Now, I'm talking of my first early potatoes. Um, I've noticed, I don't know if anybody else's potatoes have started to plough up, but mine have. And uh, I'm looking forward to that because that is a good sign that those first early potatoes are ready. Um, I'm going to let them give them a little bit longer, another week or two, but then I'm going to start harvesting some of those potatoes and get eating them. After all, that's the whole point of growing them, and they are going to be those beautiful new potatoes. They're just going to be so nice. A bit of butter. Oh, cannot wait to eat them. 
Stuart Jackson, I planted up my tomatoes, chilies, aubergines and cucumbers. Last three in the greenhouse. Tomatoes on the patio as that is in full sun most of the day. I certainly feel like now is the time that we can start planting most of our tender plants out. I feel it's safe now. Maybe a bit different, a bit further up north, but certainly here I feel it is safe. I always used to go by when Chelsea was on as a good guide of when it was safe to pot out our tender plants. And Chelsea, I believe, is next week. So, like that. Uh, Jenny Hallett, I'll try and send some photos in for next week. Please do. That would be lovely. Uh, Anna Jones says, still bone dry in the northeast. The little rain we've had here has not made much difference. Still out there water and etc well we've had the other night we, it was a beautiful thunderstorm literally thunder lightning thunder so bright it lit up the entire room it was great but more importantly the rain my water butts have been full up again from that rain so i'm really really pleased with that uh, Stuart Jackson, can I put aubergines outside as well as in the greenhouse? You can. Good question, actually. Uh, good question. You can put your aubergines outside. They will do okay. They do better in a greenhouse because they are tropic plants. They do love a lot of warmth, but they will be okay outside. Uh, Digwell says three different types of my non heat treated set sown onions are bolting nightmare. Yeah, that's also a very good point. Digwell brings up. I've noticed my garlic uh, and my onions have started bolting, particularly my um elephant garlic, which is usually very, very tolerant, but they've all started bolting, which is a, a very, very worrying. But I know it's because it's been such a difficult changeable spring that that's why it's happening i'm just going to make sure from now on in we do a point of actually keeping on top of that water and then adding loads and loads of water to it and trying to maintain it uh kerry says her potatoes aren't flowering yet uh it won't be long it won't be long because as graham has said had my first early potatoes today pentland javelin yum yum oh very nice very nice uh, my first ones will be Rocket. Can't wait. I really cannot wait to start getting this sort of stuff in. It, it makes it all that more exciting. Uh, Jenny Hallett says, I grew aubergines outside last year and they cropped well. So it just goes to show, Stuart, it can be done indeed. Um, I think they do do better. Generally speaking, they do do better in a greenhouse, but they will do okay outside. Stuart Jackson, no flowers on my spuds. I must do the Chelsea chop on my apple tree this week. We look forward to seeing some photos of that, Stuart. Uh, Richard Vobes has joined. Good evening to you. Digwell says, to Stuart, my aubergines have been out for three weeks now. Fantastic crop last year. There you go. Uh, Tobo Street, my onions bolted last year, so I'm keeping up with the watering this year. I think that's very important. It's hard to deal or hard to do on an allotment to keep up with the watering to stop things from bolting, in my eyes, unless you are able to get down there on a daily basis for plenty of time. I am trying, trying my hardest to make sure I go down there at least once a day to water things um a bit more uh, a bit more regularly just not easy not easy at all elephant garlic is supposed to bolt same as hard neck garlics i've never had it bolt before that's what's through me is i've never had the elephant garlic bolt before hopefully i mean i love elephant garlic it's probably much better than normal garlic in terms of storage but what I'm going to be doing this year when I harvest all my garlic is actually making up some garlic, either putting it in oil to store it, a, su a subject we've got coming up in a couple of weeks, storage, um, or making garlic paste, because I've got annoyed with keeping hold of garlic and it going off in storage. Jim M, I've been cutting scapes off my garlic this week. Seems a bit early. Funny enough, this is what I noticed as well I feel the same it does seem a little bit early for them to be bolting it's middle of may going into the third last third of may i guess and getting these 
getting these bolts in, it, it's worrying, worrying, worrying. Uh, when onions and garlic start to bolt, is there anything you can do or is the plant done for? Good question, Kate. And here we are talking about bolting and how annoying it is. What you can do is basically remove that flower stem, just pinch it off um, before it flowers. But as soon as you see it, pinch it off. You can actually use them, the, the, the bits that you pinch off, like in the onions. I use them a bit like spring onions. They're delicious. And the same with the garlic chop them up they're quite thin they're nice as a, a spring onion substitute absolutely delicious and that in theory should stop them from bolting but when it comes to harvesting and storing you will need to use them up first because they're a bit of a problem uh but they don't store as well i should say uh kerry's potatoes will be pentland too uh kerry says i couldn't get my aubergines to germinate uh, aubergines can be a little tricky. I like to start my aubergines in January and I start them under heat and under grow lights. And that seems to work quite nicely for me. And I use seed sowing compost. Um, don't quite know where you've gone wrong with them, but I would say start them in, uh, in January Start them and start them off on, you know, with some heat, either a heated propagator indoors or something like that. If you cannot, if you don't have grow lights, don't worry. Just make sure they get plenty of light. Um, Kerry also says our onions are looking great, but are uh, looking amazing. Sorry, but garlic not so great. Indeed, indeed. Uh, dig well. Snap off the scapes and cook them in butter. Yummy, yummy. Which is exactly what we're talking about. The scapes, the flower spike, whatever you want to call it. It is delicious. And this brings us quite nicely onto tonight's subject of these cheap meals that we can cook at home, and especially using our grow your own food. Now, I mentioned using these scapes as like spring onions or cook them in butter, as Digwell says. For me, that is a real money saving aspect because I grow overwintering onions and I've started growing spring spring grown onions. Overwintering onions don't store as well as spring grown, but we get early growth on them that I can start harvesting onions pretty much now. They're of a decent size. But if we're using escapes as well, we're getting two crops from that one plant, which I think is just so much better, as well as saving us money. Um, so Let's go on to this money saving expert. Keep keep coming with your comments, of course, and keep get any ideas of any recipes, what you've been up to in the garden, etc. etc. Uh Benny said, a lot more effort, but I have better luck growing my onions from seed. A lot of people say that. A lot of people say that. I did grow onions from seed before. I a lot more effort is what pots me off because of time more than anything. Um I'm happier growing sets. My own, my spring zone sets are doing pretty poor this year. Uh, Nicola Cornish Heaven has joined. Evening all. Oh, sorry I'm late. Lovely to see you. Dig well. As a garlic flower spike grows in between the cloves, it does not affect the keeping quality of the cloves. That is true. It doesn't. More the onions that the causes the problems. But you do want to snap that spike off as soon as it is. Stuart, I forgot I've planted courgettes and butternut squash. Plus, I'm try going to try potting a pumpkin plant in one of my compost bins. A bit of a trial. Hopefully, it will work. It will work. I can guarantee you it will work, and it will grow some amazing pumpkins. I do it every year. I'm doing it this year. I've done it already. It is such a good way to grow pumpkins. And, in fact, any of your squash family will do well growing it in compost bins or anything like that. Uh, yeah, Digwell says onions that are bolted need to be used and not stored. I, again, I agree with that. You know, they do need a lot of, they do need using up pretty quickly. Uh, I couldn't get my aubergines going either from Kate. I, I do wonder if it's lack of heat. So that would be my guess, but I could be wrong. Uh, Ernie is joined. Good evening to you. Um, she's gardening. Evening, Richard. Listening whilst in the garden. I trust you well. Very well, thank you. I hope you are well too. Uh, Seed-sown onions are less prone to bolting. That is also very, very true. They certainly are. 
Uh, Kerry, I just throw all my veg in a pot with some cooked water and make a veg soup. And she goes on to say carrot and coriander soup. Soup, yummy. Now that, as I said, cost-saving recipes. And soup is probably going to be top of the list. I spoke on the podcast, I made a leek and potato soup, which cost us pence. And I do like, do really like soups. Uh, they're not my general thing I would rush out and go and get, but homemade soups, nice, easy, freezable as well, so I can make a big batch up of soup, keep them in the freezer. More importantly for this cost of living crisis, they are cheap to produce. For me, one of the big things that I feel makes most uh, soups stand out is the fact that we can uh, use by making my own stock. And I spoke about this a bit before. Um, I always make stock. So vegetable stock is so easy to make. I use a slow cooker. And what I do, if I peel any potatoes, obviously you've got to make sure the skins are clean, but all those potato peelings go into that slow cooker. Carrot tops that you're not going to eat go into that slow cooker. The onions, the peel, peels of onions go into that slow cooker. Um, any potatoes that aren't used or any veg and carrots, et cetera, et cetera. Basically, any vegetables that you can spare can, that can go into that stock pan, go in there. Fill it with water, add a few herbs, and then I'll bring that stock, that slow cooker up to a boil, and then I'll turn it on its coldest setting for about a day, 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, and just let that bubble away and basically from create a beautiful vegetable stock. Once that time is expired, I basically drain it off and I'll keep the liquid, of course, and that liquid can then be used for soup stocks whatever you may use stock for it's one of my best ways i find of making stock and it's the same if i do if we have a roast chicken for example we do exactly the same but we add the carcass from the chicken into that pan as well chicken stock um so so easy to make and for me if you are keen on cooking a good stock is something that should be in your freezer at all times Far better than any stock cubes, if I do say so myself. So I'm going to start off with making your own stock as a great way. And then when it comes to making soups, you take that stock, you might fry some onion and whatever you're doing. Let's say carrot and coriander, add some carrots, add some coriander, add that stock, boil it up for, well, bring it to the boil and simmer for half hour, blend it all. There you go. You've got your soup ready to go. So let's see what everybody else is saying. Stuart Jackson says, most of my meals will be very low cost this year because I've joined the supporters club. For me, the cheapest way of buying seeds of each pack of seeds is less than a pound per pack. So any meal with veggies is going to be very low cost. My aubergines all grew well on the windowsill. So, yes, uh, I normally don't like to bring this in this early, but my supporters club, I run a supporters club. It's here to support the podcast and the live show. £5 a month, and for that, I send out six packets of seeds each month, which can be grown. I think that's pretty good value, as well as extra podcasts and things. Uh, more importantly, it, it's a way that I feel of save, make it, helping everyone save money and grow their own food. Uh, Jenny Hallett, aubergine for me are sewn in a sunny window seal around February. Heat from the radiator. We have a cooler. Hold that thought. Let's break. Hello, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? It's the Oracle. Hello, Oracle. How are you today? I'm a lot better for speaking to you, Richard. Ah, fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, you charmer. I was just phoning in there. I see Stuart Jackson said he's going to try and, and grow the pumpkin. Yeah. And this experiment coming out of his compost bin. And I just put in there. Do you remember him to put the drain tape in, Richard, so he can feed the roots of the pumpkin? Yes. Yes, that's a very good point. I mentioned this on the main podcast on Monday about putting a little pot next to the, the pumpkin plants and you water into that to get it down into the roots. Well, what, what I've seen now is and the, the, the pumpkins are actually, I want to see a tree these days, like, and they're not them a lot big dams, like, it's just normal pumpkin seed. He doesn't actually try and grow the big things, but he actually saves the seeds. 
I want he has the, the dream tape pushed down to where the root is, and he actually fills the dream tape up the water. Now, and saying that, Stuart Jackson's through the spotter in the works so he does, because he's going to grow it coming out of his compost bin. So, yeah. with that all decomposing, it would be exciting to see what, what end product he gets. Oh, yes, yes. I'm sure he will send us photos to see what we get out of it. You know, would it, would it need to be paint with it being, because you wouldn't know what way it's all out there decomposing underneath. Well, what I found, because I've been growing pumpkins like this for years, is that the roots, I mean, it, Victorian gardeners used to do something serious, similar as well. The roots go into all that decomposing material and they get feed from it and it helps them grow big, strong plants and yeah. pumpkins. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that myself, but it's, it's exciting to see. The only thing is, I couldn't grow one out of my compost bin, like, you know, mm. but it would be interesting to see. Yeah. But in, in saying that, I'm sure everyone will be testing the pumpkin I'm sure they what way to grow, like. Sorry, you broke up there. So everyone will be testing out to see what way you can grow the pumpkin this year, like, but it'll be exciting to see. I've never seen one grow out of the compost bin before. Oh, yeah. I've been doing it for years, so uh, we'll, make sure we share. we'll make sure we share this right. year. Yeah, all I've, all I've never seen them going out of the ground. Obviously, you know, there's hell to grow about 30 foot on the ground. Yeah. And you pick the best pumpkin and all that, like. But I've never seen them coming out of a, a, a compost bin. Well, there you go. But it'll be exciting to see. Yeah. Yeah, we'll make sure you can see some photos of it as it goes on throughout the year. I, I, that's the best thing about your show, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> you, get to, you get to see it all coming together. Yeah, you learn something new. All right, Richard. Okay. God bless, son. God All the bless. best. He's the best. You take care. Thank you very much. Yes, God bless, son. Bye. Bye. There we go. So that was Oracle, who's just learned about growing pumpkins or pretty much any squash plants in a compost bin, something that I have done for years. So well, I was reading this one off. Uh, aubergine for me are sown in sunny windowsill around February, heat from radiator, and then the sun. I find it best not to let the compost get too wet or germination can be off. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Um, heat. They need heat to germinate. I like a nice early growing period like Jenny here and also just keeping the, the compost moist not soaking wet because the seed might rot away but just moist seems to work quite nicely there uh, Kate homemade veg stock is fab but I will never make homemade fish stock again the smell haunted my house for days and still haunts my dreams yes I know exactly what you're talking about there um, fish stock yeah yeah, that, that is quite smelly. Um, my pepper and aubergine seed plants get the same treatment. I found that works best for me. That was what Jenny was saying earlier about sowing them, just keeping the soil moist, but not soaking wet. Mr. Jackson, stock cubes can be very salty, so I must learn how to make my own stock. There's no time like a present. If you've got a slow cooker and you're chopping up vegetables, just take all that waste material and pull it in there and do it there. Uh, Ian Meadows says, speaking of supporters club, I am sowing the cucumber white pickle this week, but have seen different advice as to how big the fruits should be before harvesting. What's your advice? So these particular ones, they are, the, the, the cucumber is called white pickle. Um, so they are only meant to be about two, three centimetres long, if I remember correctly. And what I'll do, Ian, I'll message you afterwards when I can go back and check my notes, because trying to do it off memory. Uh, is can sometimes let me down but i will check um to about two three centimeters all i need they're a tiny little one some of the the bigger gherkins can get big um uh can get big uh bigger but those ones are about two three centimeters so i'll go i'll, I'll message you afterwards oh cool the pumpkin grow off is on guys name the seed and i will get them um, so the seed I'm using is Rogue Vifta and Tempus, which I cannot pronounce correctly. I'm sure Digwell will probably type it in the chat for I'm sure he knows what I mean. Um, that's what I would use and grow them off in your compost heaps. 
I start all my seeds on the top of my boiler until the seed germinates. Then they get moved off the seedling to the greenhouse or a warm window. Again, using that heat. And if it's on top of a boiler, it's uh, reusing that heat from your boiler instead of having something like I use, like where you're creating, I use uh, electric heated propagators. So I've got to create, excuse me, create heat to do that. Uh, Stuart also says the white cucumbers, can they be eaten raw or do they have to be pickled? They can be eaten raw. You just might find the skin a little bit tough. And uh, Digra says, I've sown two batches of the white pickle cukes now and only one has germinated for me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Digra. I've, I've, germ I've got quite a few germinated. Um, I don't know what's happened there. I'm sorry to say. Um, yeah. I've got quite a few. That's weird. I missed the name of breaking up a bit. Oh, what's going on? Uh, so I said Rogue Vifta and Tempest. That's how I pronounce it, and I've probably pronounced it wrong as that type of pumpkin. Um, pressure cooker. Good for making stocks and veg casserole. Cheaper on energy. Didn't think of using a pressure cooker, actually. That's a good idea. Probably make it in a lot of a shorter time as well. This is a good point, actually, talking of things like pressure cookers and slow cookers, which use quite little electricity and therefore save money on our electricity bill. So what other recipes can we come up with? So I said soup is probably one of the cheapest meals that we can make using our homegrown food, be it a vegetable soup, a... Um, um, that's, the, that's what it was, pumpkin roll with then tempers. Uh, be it a vegetable soup or even a chicken soup, you just add vegetables to just making your own stock goes a long way to helping with that. But we're looking for some other nice low cost recipes that we can do. And I'm, I was on the allotment today and I was looking around to see what we've got available at the moment that we could turn into some meals. One thing that is quite prominent at the moment um, is, well, there's two things that are quite prominent at the moment, but one thing that we're getting plenty of is pumpkins. And we're getting, not pumpkins, sorry, rhubarb. So I can hear somebody outside this door. It might come in. Ah, yeah, um, we get a lot of rhubarb at the moment. And making things out of rhubarb, which is always great, be it rhubarb crumbles, nice and cheap and easy to make, uh, rhubarb strudel, rhubarb, just put it in a blender and mi mixing it down, always nice. Um, I've made rhubarb juice, but that was disgusting. Rhubarb full, that's another cheap one, isn't it? Rhubarb full. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, another cheap one. Any cheap ideas like that? Crumble, I said crumble at the beginning, pretty cheap to make, just flour and butter mixed up together in a few oats. Is that under 30p a serving? Possibly, possibly. I'm going to work that out tomorrow, uh, but I think it is. Um, do like a nice rhubarb crumble. Uh, Digra says, rogue vif means vivid red. Rogue vif means vivid red. So vivid red pumpkin is the, what it translates to, I guess. Uh Rhubarb and ginger cake. How cheap and how do you make that cake and how cheap can it be? Uh, while you dwell on that question, we do have a video that's been sent in. Uh, I think this is from Bally, Bally Cillian's allotment. Let's have a look and see what's going on. Hello, Richard. We're just going to fill up Bally's plot here. Just going to show two wee different methods that are almost identical. But it makes all the difference for growing two tomatoes. So we'll just walk through Philly's plat series. Potatoes are coming on well. Cabbage and sprouting broccoli. His onions are coming on well here. This is his blueberries. More onions, more peas. And now we'll just go into his pot and shed. Around here first, fella. We'll show them our wee friend. Wee frogs 
on the pond. I do a good job in here, keep slugs and all down. Now, this is two methods that will look the same. This is two methods of growing tomatoes that are almost identical, but there's a slight tweak to it that it makes it, at the end of the year, Philip will have exactly the same crop as me, but there's a slight wee tweak to the way we do it. Billy uses the halos, so this would be empty, and as we all know, all these wee hairy things in the stem are all roots in tomato plants, so the root ball, you'll cut the lower leaves off, and the root ball will be at the very bottom of this halo, roughly approximately six inches down. Now when it comes to growing his tomatoes, he fills the halo with water, the water seeps down, and it waters the plant from the bottom. We don't want to water the plant from the top, because we want the roots to go down. The more these wee things grow, the stronger the plant will get. Now when it comes to feeding, he'll feed from the top. And he'll do all his watering here, it seeps through and feeds the bottom of the tomato plant. These tomato plants will grow on, they'll get a good crop. Now we'll go around and I'll show you mine, the slight tweak. Okay Richard. This is a slight tweak, almost identical, but Philly lives beside the allotments and when he's going to work, he passes it more than night. So he can use the halos, because he can obviously come every day, but not every day I can come. So this is the way I do it. Use these, I use these. Use fill with water, just no way to see the water or not. And this capillary mountain comes from the water right up into the pot. So again, that, the root ball of that is at the base of the pot, which is around 20 inches down, so that whole stem's getting fed with water. And again, if I'm feeding the plant, I feed from the top. They actually tell you to put the feed in here, but I don't like that. I like the feed to go on the top. Because the capillary matting, it pulls the water well, but I don't believe it pulls the feed well. So I'll feed from the top, water from the bottom. And again, these will grow on, and we'll end up with exactly the same crop. Well, a slight wee difference in the way you grow them. So my advice would be, anybody watching everything, watch all the videos you can watch, and take wee bits from every video that works for you, and form your own way of growing things. Well, there we go. What a great little video that was. I've got to say, I'm really into, at the moment, using these uh, ideas for saving water and reducing the amount of water in. Those watering plots or self-watering plots look fantastic. So yeah, great stuff, great stuff. Thank you very much for that video. Uh, that was Bally Cillian sent to me via Philly, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, I don't know if you heard that. There's a load of barking going on out there, and I don't know what's going on. Probably a cat in the garden now in Roxy again. Uh, where were we? So Turbo Stream is stewing rhubarb as I watch. There you go, stewed rhubarb, bit of sugar. That's a nice, easy, cheap meal right there as well uh eggy potato onion bag doesn't cost much as everything is grown on the farm how do you make it because that sounds actually really really nice uh pauline king king hey richard hope you are keeping well very well thank you and uh just so you can see there's that i don't know if you got my email back to your email um my emails sometimes play around, I swear, because people keep saying they don't get my emails. Uh, but thank you for that anyway. Uh, Turbo Stream. Only cheap meal I can think of is salad leaves from the window box with homegrown onion and tomato. You know, salads, I, it's something I've talked a lot about is how easy it is to grow things like cut and come again salads because they are easy to grow. Get them once and they keep coming in and coming and coming. Nice and cheap meal. I worked out salads, I look at come again salads to cost about 2p a meal if you do it right. A uh, bit of onion, bit of tomato, bit of vinegar, bit of egg, even makes it up into a nice little egg salad, make it nice and cheap. Uh, Bally Ceiling looks like he knows his stuff. Has he got a channel? I don't think he does, but I think he should get a channel. I, I'm a whilst get out there. Uh, Kate, a lentil bolognese is lovely. You can use homemade veg stock as well as veggies from the garden. Two tablespoons of olive oil, two large onions, three chopped carrots, two, chopped two stems of celery, chopped two, two tablespoons, teaspoons, sorry, of fresh thyme leaves, one tablespoon of dried thyme, two garlic cloves, finely chopped, two tablespoons of 
puree, 500 grams of pie lentils, rinsed and drained with a 40 gram of tinned tomatoes, one and a half liters of vegetable stock and a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar and 10, 300 grams of dried pasta. Uh, another great video again. Yeah, that sounds absolutely delicious. How do you go about it from that? Uh, recipe from Eat Well for This. This is what we need to get out there. I used the quad grows as well, but I converted them to solar panel power so they drip feed water as well as wicking up. Oh, that's a good idea. Good idea. Um, I've seen those quad grows and I keep thinking I should get some. Maybe one day. One day. Uh, postman delivering. You don't know. I think probably a cat in the garden. Obviously, he's got really territorial lately. Uh, such a well organized pat. Hot Valley. It always is so good to see on camera. That looks good. No, didn't get any emails. So I'll, like, I'll email you again. So, uh, Stuart says, hopefully I will have some great salads this year using my free, all my free seeds already eaten lettuce and spring onions. Exactly right. Lettuce, spring onions, salad leaves, so easy, so quick to grow. You know, I'm, I've not been talking much about this actually, but I'm losing weight at the moment. Um, partly due to having to go and walk the dog every night, which is doing me the world of good, I've got to say. But also, I have really started to try and eat what I'm growing or try to spend less money on our food. I'm always trying to do that. I'm, I'm always trying to be self-sufficient. But the fact that I'm eating so many salads, because salads are so, so ideal, I've lost a stone in the last two months, I think it is. Something like that. So it's paying off great in that regard. But I'm also saving money, saving a lot of money through not having to go to the shop as much. <clears throat> and that's what I'm going to continue doing throughout this year. Just try not to try and keep these meals really cheap and eat what we grow. So, Nicola, this is the um, eggy onion potato bake. So par cook the potato. But Par cook the potatoes, slice them, sweat off the onion, lay the potatoes with layer the potatoes with the onions, pour over the beaten egg. And I'm guessing then you put it in the oven. Um, Digwell started to make my own this oh, that was a conversation going on there. Um, Last winter, I made a soup from the allotment veggie on my wood burner, so didn't even use any extra power. Yeah, yeah. This is the kind of thinking I like. Um, the kind of thinking I like, you know, how can we cook stuff? Salads don't need to use any cooking, so they're nice and cheap to make. I don't want to focus so much on salads. It's just it's working for me a lot better. 24p plus a knob of butter. Uh, for foraging. Have I missed Jenny's comment there? Um, trying to go back. I can't see anything. Sorry, Jenny. If you've got a comment up before that, I can't see it. Ian Bidders, have you thought of having a cow? Cheap beef, but make sure you've got plenty of room in the freezer. Trust me. Freezer space is not something we need, we, we struggle with. Um, it was on The Good Life. They had a cow, wasn't it? Was it? Was it a cow or was it a goat? Have I thought of having a cow? No, I have not. I don't think I would want a cow in my garden at all. But it would be a good, cheap recipe, wouldn't it? So many good recipes here. Indeed, indeed. I'm getting hungry, I've got to say. Go foraging for greens and flowers. Add to an omelette, two eggs, 24p plus a knob of butter. That's a good one, actually. Yes, we, have, we do often eat omelettes. And in fact, what I did the other day, those um, bolted onions I was talking about earlier, the tops of those when I snap off the flowers, chopped that up, threw that into an omelette. It was absolutely beautiful, really nice, just like a almost like a spring onion omelette. Really, really nice. Baked spuds with all sorts of other stuff from the veg patch, e.g. chives, sweet corn, chopped carrot and fresh coriander as toppings. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a great idea. Bake spud straight out of the allotment into the oven and add chives, cream cheese, something like that. Um, 
what I'm going to try and do this year, if I'm lucky, is make my own baked beans. I'm growing some of the haricot beans that are specifically for making baked beans. And then we're going to grow the tomatoes, of course, and make our own tomato sauce to go with these baked beans. I haven't got any recipes off the top of my head of how to do it because I'm not quite ready for it yet. But I, that's something I really want to do. Who was it gave me an a idea last year that I made? I think I made a video about this, actually. Um, cowboy baked beans we made on with bacon and stuff. That was delicious. Don't think that was quite under 30p, though. Uh, love baked potatoes. Yeah. I mean, I've got to admit, I'm not a lover of baked potatoes. My wife does like them. I, I'm not keen on them, but I can see why people do like them. And again, it's that cheap meal, cheap meal that we're looking for. <laughs> a cow will eat the veg after you make the stock. And as a bonus, you get free compost. Good point. Good point about the free compost, which could certainly do with some of that. Probably also won't need a lawnmower either. They'll keep the grass trimmed. Well, sheep might be just as good as that, as I'm sure Adrian can testify to. Big well, I grew my own baked beans, but I found the cans went rusty. How annoying is that? How annoying is that? Um, I keep getting this itch just here, so apologies. Uh, I, I really am going to try and grow my own baked beans this year. And we're underway doing it. it I'm, something I'm really looking forward to, actually, as well. Um Right, so we've covered soups and we've covered salads. We've covered rhubarb. Now, one thing that I've been pondering is asparagus. I've got asparagus popping up and we're eating quite a bit of it at the moment. If you were to buy asparagus, there's no way it'll be under 30p, of course. But my asparagus is quite a few years old and it'll continue providing us with asparagus for years to come. Which means, I can't remember how much I paid, 20 quid for the crown, something like that, for a whole bit of asparagus. I get that back in the amount of asparagus I harvest each year. Easy 20 quid's worth of asparagus every year. And that will do that for at least 20 years. So I think that certainly falls underneath the 30p category. But trying to find something I can do with asparagus is a bit tricky. We made a asparagus and leek quiche with no crust. That was really, really nice, actually. Again, the asparagus, the leek, and the eggs all came from our garden and our allotment. So effectively, apart from a bit of olive oil, it didn't cost us anything unless you really break it down to how much a seed cost, how much a chicken feed cost, etc., etc. It does get very, very complicated. But we, we made this crustless quiche, we had it for we had it for dinner one day and then lunch another and the leftover for lunch. Uh, absolutely delicious, absolutely delicious. And in that way, nice and cheap. Uh, we're just getting going with the growing season here in Alberta. We've got lots planned. Looking forward to eating it all from Paulie. Yes, guessing Alberta being a bit higher up, and a bit colder, it is a little bit further behind. She's barking again, isn't she? Um, a bit further behind, so I can see it probably similar to Scotland. So probably two, three, maybe four weeks behind us, I would imagine. But hopefully you've got plenty of food growing now and get started. At salad leaves, always salad leaves is the first thing to go. Uh, I'm growing baked beans as well. Lots of different beans from Jenny. Yes, lots of different baked beans uh, or beans that you can hold off. Um, I'm trying to think what other beans I've got. We've got some, um, we've got a lot of interesting beans going in at the moment. It, this year, I'm really am um, trying to grow lots and lots of various beans, be it the climbing beans, the dried beans, all for our storage. I'm sorry, I can hear a man again sloppy with her as well. I'm just going to open the door and see if she'll come in. Let's see what happens with a door open. I don't like having a door open because sometimes it screws of alert <coughs> really uh, jenny hallett a twist to the yellow is add a couple of sliced potato foraging ingredients and the eggs make a spanish amulet slice into four and serve with salad should be under the 30p with the plot ingredients yeah yeah that's a, that's a good idea i mean 
Spanish omelette and various omelettes are a great way, especially if you get your own chickens. Although I did work out that a single egg from a supermarket now is about 18p an egg. Roxy, um, it's 18p an egg. How can you make a 30p meal for under eight for that with 18p? It costs 18p for an egg. Uh, I'm growing, I've read that one. We had two nights of frost, so I had to cover some plants, hopefully warmer nights from now on. Interesting, interesting. I've been saying the other day, you know, there's a, still a risk. We've probably passed it here, but there's still a risk of frost depending on where you are. Stuffed peppers or tomatoes just add a little rice. That's a good one. Didn't think of that. Stuffed peppers or tomatoes. That's a very, very good one. Maybe not just rice, lentils or something. Or, um, oh, I, oh, that's got my brain really going. I'm thinking some some lentils or some, perhaps some leftover bolognese even. Lots of good ideas. That. I didn't think stuffed potatoes, stuffed peppers, sorry. But um, I like that idea a lot, a lot. Uh, just filled our bird seed feeder up. I'm sure they are standing there looking in the window, asking where the fat balls are. Yeah, I'm sure they are too, those damn birds. At this point, I just want to ask everybody if you would be good enough to like or give us a thumbs up or whatever emotion you can do if you're on Facebook or YouTube. Give us a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already or following, please do hit that button as well. And also click the notification so you know we go live. We always go live on a Sunday at 6. We might do a few extra during the week if I have the time. Uh, so please, please, please do do that. Also, I should ask, ask that earlier on because it helps with the algorithm. Um, so asparagus at the moment is coming in. Uh, what, what other recipes have we got? Potatoes seem to feature quite a lot as a cheap meal uh, from what I'm seeing out there today. Again, I feel if you grow your own, which is why I, I believe we all should all be growing our own anyway, but I believe if you're growing your own, the potatoes are going to be a staple because they are cheap. They may not necessarily be the healthiest food, but they are pretty much up there as being a, a good source of cheap food. And for that matter, cabbages. Cabbages are another one that are pretty cheap. And with potatoes, there's a, a dish that I make that combine the two, and it's called something I call cannon. I think it, the Irish guys might be able to tell us more about this. So what I like to do is I'll, I'll boil up some peeled potatoes, and I will boil up, boil up some sliced cabbage. And then I basically mix mix the two together, mash up the potatoes with a bit of butter and milk and mix the two together. Maybe add a little bit of cheese if it's available. And cold cannon, absolutely delicious. More of a side dish than a meal, but well worth it. Um, vegetable curries. I can't believe I didn't think about vegetable curries. They can be made quite cheaply using wow. tomato, homegrown tomatoes as the, uh, the source of the the sauce, a few herbs, a few spices. Um, what goes well with a vegetable curry? Pumpkin, or any squash for that matter, goes well. Cauliflower actually goes well in a um, in a curry. It takes on the flavour really nicely. Um, pumpkins, cauliflower. Uh, I'm trying to think what else goes in a vegetable in a vegetable curries that we make from time to time that really do add another good one. Pauline's just came up with a really good one, bubble and squeak, which is generally for leftover foods anyway. Um, very, very cheap. Um, depending, depends how you make it, of course. Uh, we tend to throw um, whatever leftovers from Christmas, for example, be it Brussels sprouts, cabbages, uh, maybe bacon if it's available, um, into a pan with some potato and just basically warm it through squash it all together fry it down absolutely lovely I haven't had it for a while now and i fancy some bubble and squeak but he soon says this is the first year i've harvested my asparagus when do you stop to let the crown retain its strength for future years good question so you normally have a six to eight week period where you can harvest asparagus so i usually don't harvest mine after 
the end of May. Maybe into the beginning of June, it depends on how well it is. But mid-June, I would say, is the latest height you could go. Um, it does mean a chance to regain its strength, of course, and let it grow its firms, which is always good. Um, but 20, 20 years, you can get out of the crown of asparagus for it to last. I think it's well worth growing. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I start harvesting mine mid-April and then no later than in middle June. Personally, I bring it for earlier than that, but that's because my soil is pretty poor and pretty weedy. Um, very yummy. Indeed, bubble and squeak is very, very yummy. Roxy! Roxy! Oh, she's chasing a cat, apparently. I've just heard Amanda. Sorry if everyone can hear that. Um, she's getting, getting a bit noisy lately, and she doesn't like cats. We have a caller. Hello, caller. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, this is Stuart. Hello, from Stuart. North Wiltshire. Hello, mate. How are you doing? I, I'm doing fine, mate. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. What have you got for us? Well, I'm just ringing in to have a complaint, really. Yeah. All these it. seeds you keep, all these seeds you keep sending me. My patio is full. <laughs> my okay. garden is full. My patio is full. I shouldn't be complaining, really, should I? You can complain, but I ain't going to do anything about the complaints. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought you knew you would. Now, I, I just, just thought I'd ring in just to sort of. Somebody said about their aubergines not germinating. Um, it's just. I just think they need, they do need a bit of heat, but all I did was follow follow your instructions. That's all I did. Yeah. yeah. So, put, like start them off on the boiler because I haven't got a heat mat, um, and then put them in a warm windowsill. Right. And I, at one point, I had, I had eighty six. At one point, eighty six. Eighty six. Yeah. I've sold a few. Yeah. And I've got a couple. I got a couple in the greenhouse, and then I was intending to put one in the garden, but that's why I asked the question. Yeah. You know, um, but I think I'll probably put, get another grow bag and put them on the patio because the patio's warm all the time, and yeah. like even at night it keeps its heat because obviously because of the stone and the wall, it yeah. keeps it keeps a lot of heat in. So I'm thinking it might be a safe place to put it rather than put it in a windy spot or. a... Um, you know, where the wind can get hold of it or just sort of a bit showered. Hopefully that'll work. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, it would definitely work. I mean, a greenhouse is the best place, but if you haven't got a greenhouse, a sheltered spot, it would do it just mm. as well. It's all about, they are a tropic plant. They love the heat. They need the heat. So the bit more you can do with that, the better. Mm. The better. Well, I have got one in the greenhouse with, I put the cucumbers in the greenhouse this year and the tomatoes outside. Yeah. Um, just because obviously they need different growing conditions with the tomatoes and the cucumbers. And I thought, well, if I put a cucumber and chili and aubergine in the greenhouse and see what happens, and then do the same outside. If I put, I'm not going to put a cucumber outside because that's just an accident waiting to happen. Um, but I'll try an aubergine and probably a couple of chilies as well. Yeah. So, nice. but it's, it's just been so hot. Everything's like, Dry. It's like chaff. Mm. Every, you know, I, I'm on heavy clay like you. So the bits I haven't watered, like the like the lawn, because I, I refuse to water the lawn. You can put your hand in the gaps, and it, you know we're we're not in, we're not in July yet. You know? No, it, it's very very worrying how dry it has been this year. I've got to agree. Oh. It's going to make it a bit difficult. We're normally quite lucky compared to you. We normally get a bit more rain than you, but. Even now, like I, I've, I've done a bit of weeding in the in the flower bed today, and I've had to water it because it's so hard. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I don't, I don't like watering perennials because they normally look after themselves. Yeah. You know, they, the roots go down, and you know, look, roots look for water, don't they? You know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah absolutely. So, but to get the perennial weeds out, I've had to water, yeah. <laughs> which breaks my heart, really. Yeah, but course. as you've seen, I had plenty. I had plenty of water last week. I think I ended up with about about 140 liters just by putting the buckets out. Yeah, yeah. We, we, was it last week we discussed that? 
Yeah. Like yeah, I think that goes to show yeah. you how much extra you can do, but just having some buckets out and capturing as much rainwater as we can. Yeah. yeah, and and don't forget the stinging nettles at the bottom of your garden. Use them and use them instead of spinach. They taste just as good. <laughs> well, that that brings me nicely on to the next question. I was going to ask you is that can, apart you've recommended this nettle soup. Any other cheap recipes that you can think of, or, or do you not do so much of the cooking in your household? Well, I do a bit, but not like I I tend to cook the basic food. Mm -hmm. I don't tend to cook anything that's got you need a brain. Um, but saying that, I can, I can, I can cook soup, um, and I do like I do like um, spinach. I do like carrot and coriander. Um, the trouble is, I like the stuff that you've got to put money into it, like broccoli and Stilton. Um, so I'm going to actually talk about that. I'm going to have to plant some broccoli this year. Um, but I've just found it really helpful having the seeds this year because I'm growing things that I would never buy. Yeah. Yeah. So, like aubergines, I'd never buy a packet of aubergine seeds. Yeah. And now I'm, you know, if it's if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I, I'm trying things, trying different things. Yeah. You know, like grow artichokes. Um, but I'm going to put them in my flower bed because they look so good. Oh, they are beautiful. <laughs> They're big plants, but uh, they are yeah. beautiful. They're really good, good architectural plants, as I call them. Yeah, I I just thought. Because they need a little bit more space, I just thought, well, I'll put them at the back of the flower bed, and then, you know, I won't, when they need harvesting, I'll harvest them. And if I, again, if I don't like them, at least I can leave the others to flower. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or, or give them give them to a neighbour, yeah. or, you know, yeah. like you do with your courgettes, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, courgettes. Now, that, that brings, that, that's... Next courgettes, is a bit, yeah, because if you've got, what, what does an average family need? Two plants tops, I would think. So if you plant an extra courgette plant, then you can make lots and lots of soup. Yeah. Or, a... or freeze it. You know, if you freeze them, I presume you can freeze courgettes. I've never tried, but... I think if you make meals out of courgettes and then freeze that, it goes well on your yeah. curries, for example. Yeah. Yeah. You could, you could always use it instead of... You could use it as a lasagna instead of a lasagna sheet, okay. like you do with leeks. You know, if yeah. you make a lasagna with leeks... Yeah. Instead of instead of the pasta sheets, yeah. That's so good. that's yeah. If you're vegan, that's a good one because because obviously pasta's got eggs in. So yeah. you could use the leeks leeks or courgette slices really thinly. You could use that in layer it up. Yeah. Good thinking. Good Bit thinking. Off. I'm liking this. Hey, that's off the, that's the top of my head, mate. That's <laughs> the top of my head. No, that's um, exactly but the leek one. one that. The leek lasagna one is in the Harry Biker's cookbook. So if you look up Harry Biker's leek lasagna, it's, yeah. it's on the internet. Yeah, no, I've, I've, I've yeah. made that myself. I remember seeing that. That's a, a good good way. If you yeah. can't get pasta, use leeks instead. Yeah, and, you can use... Well, I either thought you could use courgettes or aubergines, really. Well, aubergines would be moussaka, effectively. Well, yeah, I suppose it would, wouldn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, ger gherkins, courgettes, anything like that. Um, yeah. But what could you use butternut squash for? So I've got quite a few of them plants this year. Oh, <laughs> oh, there's so many things butternut squash. I mean, I, I think when it comes to squash plants, there's so many things that you can do. They go great in curries. I've said that already, but butternut squash yeah. and curry really. Oh, nice yeah. Butternut, some yeah. Butternut squash curry, yeah. Yeah. Risotto, basically, yeah. I, with rice. I think I'm going to have to open up the other compost bin and plant another one then. Yeah. Um, what else can you do with butternut squash? Uh, you could use it to make, like, noodles, almost. You yeah. Quite through a spiralizer, and there you go. Yeah. You've got, like, a, a noodle-type thing. Um, or oh, roasted butternut squash. Nice and easy to make. There's so many different things, so many different things that we can do with that sort of thing. I'm sure Digwell's got loads looking at his site, so you yeah. <laughs> can ring in with a few recipes. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, but yeah, I, I um, Bellotti beans, that's another one you could make, you know, use them in. So there's lots of different vegetables you can use to make decent meals. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I've never grown Bellotti beans before, so they're the first. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
But yeah, I'm 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 going to go away and see if I can make a button not curry. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> there is one in the fridge, actually. There is one in the fridge. So I could, I could be tomorrow night's tea. There you go. There you go. After Glad the you. show, I make I make cooking. I'll start <laughs> cooking there. Well, please do yeah. a video and send it to us. Oh no, you know what my videos are like. I always get it the wrong way round. Oh uh, well, I should edit it. I'm learning. I am learning. <laughs> I am learning yeah. slowly. Yeah. Anyway, which I'll go and let somebody else call in with a decent recipe. Lovely. Thank you very much, Stuart. All the best. All right, then. Take Cheers. care, Rich. Bye. 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 There we go. That was Stuart Jackson. Again, what I love about that conversation we've just had with Stuart is thinking of different ways that we can use our vegetables. As I said, courgettes just on the uh, uh, in place of um, uh, lasagna. Great idea, great idea. Butternut squash, different ways we can use it. Uh, market more cucumbers grown outside, okay, from Jenny. Yes, they do. Market more do do okay outside. They are a outdoor variety, if I remember off the top of my head. Cucumbers can be pretty fussy at the best of times. <coughs> Excuse me. Cauliflower rice. Now, this is actually a recipe I've made as well. And what, uh, what, what I'd done when I made cauliflower rice, I just took a whole cauliflower, cut out the, the central core, pull it into a blender to knock it up, and then just boiled that. And it tasted, I won't say it tasted like rice, but we had it in a, with a, alongside a curry. We didn't know any different. It was really good way of using more vegetables in place of rice. Rice, to be fair, is pretty cheap. Cheap. We tend to buy it in big 20 kilo bags. But again, if we're growing it, we can use it instead. Uh, Nicholas says roasted veg dishes, indeed. Um, and Jenny says marrow vegetable lasagna is delicious. What's your recipe for that, please? That'd be great to know. Courgettes can be dried and turned into flour and used in baking. I didn't know that. Remove 25% of wheat flour and use courgette flour. I didn't know that. You can also use courgette flowers, the actual flowers, um, which would turn into courgettes, of course. You can remove those and dip them in a bit of batter and fry those. They're pretty nice as well. Uh, I don't know if anybody has actually tried that. I've tried it, and they are really, really nice. Roasted cauliflower tastes amazing. Put garlic and thyme with it, a little oil. I am absolutely loving these ideas. Starting to get a little bit hungry. We'll come back to them in just a second. But first, we've got a few photos that have been sent in. Let me find my notes. So first of all, this one has came in from Adrian. And he's been talking about he's had to repair his shed. And this is how... what. It looks like after it is repaired. Looks nice. Uh, you may be wondering what it looked like before he repaired it. And here you go. That bottom panel had completely rotted away, letting in loads of water and rain. Not very, very good for a shed. And this is what it looked like from the inside. So good to see that is repaired. Now, Kate, who is in the audience tonight, this is her polytunnel and what it looked like before. I think... Uh, it's very easy for these things to become a bit of a dumping ground, somewhere to store stuff out the way. I know my greenhouse has become a bit of that, especially as I cannot get into my shed due to the vandal. But she turned it up today, got it planted, and this is what it looks like now. Nice and tidy. I like the tool organizer on the side as well. Planted up with uh, various plants. There's another shot as well. Looks like tomatoes, etc., etc. So good to see that looking good. Another Kate has sent in these photos about her cucumbers and her aubergines and asking if these are ready to plant, be planted out. I have this is in the Facebook group, which I have answered. They certainly do look like they are ready. Just get them hardened off before they go out and they should be OK. She's also asked if these aubergines need staking now personally i don't think aubergines need staking they tend to grow quite nicely on their own off their own back so anybody else has anything they want to add check out the veg grower podcast facebook group obviously on facebook for that now this one came in from richard golden it's quite a quite a humorous one but it, the question was which gardener are you and this uh 
got me thinking because I work like the gardener on the left quite hard, always in the garden. But yeah, I always feel my garden garden looks like the one on the right, a bit of a mess. Probably right, it is a bit of a mess. But which gardener are you, left or right? Or do you feel like myself? It looks like the right, but you work like the one on the left. And finally, Digwell has shared this humorous post. And uh, as you can see, as I suspected, somebody has been adding soil to my allotment. The plot thickens. Uh, that is, uh, let me get that rid of that. That is the photos that have came in either to myself at the uk uh, by email, which is at the uk or via social media or through our Facebook group. Please do go check out our Facebook group if you're not already a member. Uh, Getting lots of people asking questions. I try not to jump in there straight away. I want to let other people have a chance before I get in there. But uh, I'm always seeing everything that goes on in there. Um, Ian Bello says, sorry, I forgot to send in photos. Better get some new ones as everything has grown. Please do, Ian. It'd be great to see. Digwa says, my aubergines needed steak in last year with all the fruit on them. There you go. I've never had steak aubergines, but I guess if they are so full of fruit, they will need steaking. Cauliflower steaks are yummy. Jazz it up as you like. Now, I tried cauliflower steaks a few years ago, and I I wasn't impressed personally. I'm not a, I've got to admit, I'm not a great lover of cauliflower at the best of times. And but as you've just said, jazz it up. It's got me thinking about adding some steak seasoning or some um, taco seasoning or something like that. Uh, and yeah, call up on the comments. There was one recipe that I haven't, I thought when I sat down here tonight and started discussing this, there was one recipe that I haven't made. I don't know the recipe myself. It's something the wife made not that long ago and it was called water pie which sounds completely ridiculous but it actually came from a, a recipe from the depression era didn't so much use ingredients from the garden i don't think from what i remember but it was cheap to make because it was created during the depression water pie that might be one to go and check out if anybody has tried it or made it themselves and can let me know the recipe love to to hear your thoughts on that uh well what well, 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 what else what else what else what else oh here we go uh cook your veg as normal for veg lasagna homemade tomato base sauce if possible pearl and hollow the marrow and cut into sheets five centimeters thick layer it up with a veg mixture and homemade cheese sauce marrow marrow lasagna actually marrow i mean i'm not a lover of marrow i'm saying this a lot this evening it feels like but marrow i i just i got a bit bored of marrow is the only way i describe it uh, so i don't grow them uh, I've got some this year that Digro actually sent us, if, and I'm growing those this year as a um, thank you towards Digro, of course. Um, but I always find them a bit boring in the kitchen, so I'm looking for ways I can use that. And this vegetable uh, lasagna, this marrow lasagna, sounds like it just hits that that bill. Cutting it into sheets in place of lasagna pasta. Um, as Roxy barks again, Amanda's just coming. So, if anyone heard a dog barking or distracting, Roxy was guarding against a cat. She's been doing that a lot lately. We had a cat come into a garden, was staking it, was stalking the chickens to try and get them until Roxy went out there and scared the cat off. So, apologies for that from Amanda. I can hear her out there now. Uh, yeah, back to this marrow, marrow lasagna. The whole idea we were talking about with Stuart we're using courgettes in the place of lasagna sheets. Now I've got that me got me thinking we could use marrow, as this suggests, five centimeters thick. It sounds absolutely delicious. We're going to try it. We're going to try that this year. Uh, cat is getting closer. It is. It is. It was very close with the chickens the other day until Roxy got out there and scared her off. Um, 
You never thought a cat would go for a chicken, but I can tell you that they will. They will. I know foxes will. And that's part of the job that Roxy has. I know she's not happy because I'm out here as well. Uh, Jenny Hunnett, season marinated cauliflower steaks great on the barbecue. Oh, oh, I didn't think of trying it on the barbecue. Oh, that's got me thinking. I regularly make a veg corned beef hash. You do. You sent us the recipe as well, if I remember correctly. Fry chopped peppers, onions, peas, and par cooked chunks of potatoes. Season to taste and add baked beans right at the end. If I remember correctly, you sent me a video of that once. That was absolutely delicious when we tried it ourselves. Um, it was uh, an idea I had as well. I don't know if anybody has made this. It's a great way of using up any gluts of vegetables a ratatouille ratatouille basically a vegetable stew we take whatever vegetables we have bung it all in a pan chop it up bung it all in a pan all the edible bits add some i don't know seasoning it does say or the correct way to do it would be add wine we tend to not to do that here because one we don't drink wine that much to have it just to add to cooking and two we don't really like the taste of alcohol and what we found we just cook that up let it stew like a normal vegetable stew and it is delicious it can be very delicious depending on what you add to it but what we've also found is that we add it to things like baked potatoes or um, anything like that that you just want a bit of sauce to Delicious for that. A lot of comments coming in while I was saying that. So, um, what have we got here? Stuart Jackson, marrow cut in half long ways and stuffed with minced beef or mixed roasted veg. Then put the two halves together, wrap with foil, cook until soft. It tastes amazing. Good idea. That's a very good idea. This is what I'm talking about. I love talking about marrows and how we can use it to make it more peeling uh good evening bit late tonight from Anis mcgowan no problem lovely to see you uh hargrave gas oh, my cats leave our chickens alone but one brought a green woodpecker in today fortunately i saved it yeah we don't have cats it's our neighbor's cats that tend to come into our garden to chase our chickens it's amazing it's amazing to, to see because i didn't think until i saw it myself that a cat would go for a chicken but it did. It did. This is there is a very good blog about wartime rationing. Search the nineteen forties experiment. <coughs> well, I think a lot of what we need to do for these cheap meals is to go back to wartime recipes and uh, what I was saying earlier about depression era recipes to find these cheap things to find. Um, it, it's not easy. It's not easy. And some of it, like, uh, what was it? Wooton pie, which was uh, a rationing pie made. I I cooked it once. I wasn't let, that in love with it, I'm going to admit. Um, but it was a way, I guess, when you're hungry and you've got no other choice, you eat whatever you can. Uh, marrow lasagna, also okay frozen. Oh, there we go. We'll try that this year what about all the fruit good point what about all the fruit now i mean fruit on its own is a meal as way i see it strawberries and cream for example probably cheap enough i mean i love strawberries i absolutely love strawberries but even strew, stewed fruit uh turning them into compots or fools again making them all that like cheap meals cheap puddings under 30p a meal, can it be done? Can it be done? I think it can. I really do think it can. Now we've started thinking about it and put it in simple terms. Uh, Jenny says, oh, I love corned beef hash. Takes me back to my childhood. Yeah, I love corned beef hash as well. Haven't had it for a long, long time now. Um, all this talk of food has got me really, really hungry. And... We've got about 10 minutes to go, so I'm going to share with you what we're having for our dinner tonight. And it is actually quite a cheap meal. So what we've got is vegetable pizza. And 
I know many people don't really think of pizza being as a cheap meal, but in fact, you can make cheap pizzas for pets. We've just made a, a, a simple pizza dough up. I'll try and keep some of that in the freezer at all times anyway. Simple pizza dough has been proved and et cetera, et cetera, made into a pizza. We've taken some tomato sauce as the, 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 the tomato sauce to go around. Again, easy to make, cheap. Just take pot some tomatoes in a pan under a bit of heat, boil them up and they thick, let the sauce thicken, a simple pasta sauce type thing. Um, and then we went some vegetables on top. Now I found artichokes go quite nicely on this, globe artichokes that is. Uh, aubergines go really nice on this, really nice on a, a vegetable pizza. Cauliflowers can go on it as well, I guess. Uh, we've not done that tonight. Um, huge, huge range of things, beans and Peas also go quite nicely on this pizza. Uh, I'm thinking outside the box. I'm thinking outside the box. Uh, Jenny says, my freezer is full of mum, sod it and throw it in. Soups, chin, curries, chilli, tomato, mixed veg, pasta sauce. No two batches are the same, all made with a veg that needs eaten up. That's exactly like the ratatouille. Um, just throw it in and see what you get. And you use it up and it becomes absolutely what we what we want to eat dehydrated fruit excuse me if you've got a dehydrator not just fruit but vegetables are quite good dehydrated um again there are ways if you haven't got a dehydrator you can do it using excuse me the oven on a very low heat Roxy, stop it um i got a dehydrator bought a few years ago very low wattage doesn't use much electricity well worth it. Ian Bennett says, I got a book by Marguerite Patton, OBE, has a recipe for pea pod soup. Got loads of pea pods, might give it a try. I've made pea pod wine before. I don't drink, so it wasn't really for me. I gave it away as presents, but I thought I'd, I'd make pea pod wine from all the pods that were left over. After all, it's just waste otherwise, isn't it? But I don't see why you couldn't use pea pods. Think about it. One, one, one two peas, we eat them in the pods, so why not? I guess unless they're hard and tough. Stuart Jackson, later in the year, I'll be picking wild blackberries and then adding them to my apples for a good crumble. Yeah, good crumbles. Good crumbles. I think crumbles are a great way to use up, especially fruit. We often think of apple or rhubarb crumble, um, but any fruit can be used in a crumble. Turbo string. Don't forget the humble bowl of porridge oats. I made some just now with dried milk and chia seeds plus a teaspoon of sugar. The seeds add fibre too. Chia, chia seeds. We can actually grow our own chia seeds. I know that is possible. Um, just looking over, I tried to grow some recently. So we, I'll let you know how we get on with that. Um, the Wartime Farm that is on YouTube but made by the BBC shows how they grew but also the portions and recipes. Indeed, there's something mentioned in the portions. I think I learned when I've watched Wartime Farm and I've tried to cook today. I, I'll admit I've got an appetite. I know I'm losing weight at the moment and this belly don't come from anywhere because I overeat. But uh, what I've learned is that my portion control was always way off. I always wanted to eat uh, what I felt satisfied in. What I've been learning, especially living this way where we are trying to uh, eat with our mind that, you know, there's, we haven't got much money with the cost of living crisis, by reducing the amount of portions, I'm actually, again, that's probably why I'm losing weight. I'm, I'm eating enough that I'm, I don't, wouldn't say I'm satisfied, but I've eaten enough to keep me going. But the portion control has really came down. I'm learning how, just how much I over ate. Um, so that's paying off really, really well. Uh, parsnip chips before, but I've never tried making them from Anna Jones. Parsnip chips, yes, I've done those. We have done those. And basically, you just take your parsnips and you cook them in the same way you would do any other chips. I use a air fryer because you don't need parboiling, parboiling, and it tends to mix them around. Uh, as in our house, works really well. Another great thing if you uh, got what use of an air fryer, great thing to have in the kitchen. Um, 
but yeah, parsnip chips, nice. I I still prefer potato chips, um, but parsnip, nice, nice, really nice. Add some honey to your parsnips as well, even better. Ian says Wartime Farm was a brilliant program. Indeed, it was. Here is my personal challenge. Cheat meals are 100% gluten-free with no pre-made ingredients. Welcome to my world from Jenny Hallett. I agree. I agree. I mean, I'm not going for the gluten-free, but I'm certainly doing cheat meals with no pre-made ingredients. It's paying off, though. It's pay it really is paying off because of the amount of weight I'm losing. I thought okay, Moxie was about to come in there. Kale crisps are yummy. Indeed they are. Yes, and kale, actually, that brings me up to some another cheap meal that I had. Seaweed. Uh, Chinese seaweed. I know uh, Digwell uses spring greens, but I like to use kale. And made this many times now. We um, basically chop the kale up nice and small. I spray over some olive oil, mix it up so it gets all nice. And cooked, add a bit of salt, bit of bit of sugar, and bake it in the oven until nice and crisp. And there you go, we've got some beautiful Chinese seaweed. I know that's probably not a meal on its own, but it is so cheap and easy to make. Um, once you do it yourself, you probably never want to buy it from a Chinese restaurant again. Uh, and, it, and it's also a good reason to grow kale. The trick when you find yourself eating too much, I used a smaller plate works a treat. That does, yeah, a smaller plate is, <laughs> I know that does work, but I find that I would go and get two plates instead. So um, portion control is definitely paying off. My favourite, my winter favourite is parsnip, leek and potato soup with apple for sweetness. And there we go. Great idea actually using an apple. Um for sweetness adrian says air fryers do not taste the same i've got to say I, I i yeah you probably got a right compared to a deep fat fryer but it's i i find it's good enough for us uh beetroot crisps are just lovely i know they are sweet but it's better for me than cake beetroot crisps yes so basically slice your beetroot and fry those in an oven bit of olive oil um, and turn them, and you get some nice crispy beetroot with that added added sweetness. It's making me very hungry tonight, guys. I've got to say, for, and it probably is also quite cheap as well, and a nice little snack. So these are the things we need to do, isn't it? That's why I keep saying we need to do these things. Um, what was the other thing I was thinking of? It's gone out of my brain. Gone out of my brain there. So it'll come to me afterwards. Right, it is very, very, pretty much half seven. So I'm going to start wrapping this up. Thank you so much for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to do all that jazz. I I can see uh, what's going on here. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to go eat my veg pizza, but I'm going to be looking at other things that we can grow. I'm going to be on the, the podcast that goes out on a Monday night. I've had a request to include recipes each week, and that's what we're going to be doing. I just hear Roxy bark again, so I'm going to have to rush off. Um, we'll be back again next Sunday at six. Crops in pots. So let me know what you are growing in pots and photos and etc. etc. Um, Ian says, my throat cancer dropped me from 12 stone to 7 stone in a matter of weeks. Luckily, I'm steadily graining weight. Uh, I'm glad to hear you you recovered um, on that. Uh, Nick there says, topic for next week, crops in pots. Uh, so please do send your photos and ideas for that. That went quick. Thanks, Richard. See you all next week. It did go quick indeed. Bye, Richard and all from Adrian. Thanks for another great live show. See you all next week. Right, I'm going to skedaddle. I look forward to seeing you all next Sunday. Podcast out tomorrow, talking about my wedding boots and comfrey. Uh, so please do check in for that. Uh, uh, what am I looking for? Um, I think that is about it. Please do, as I said, send in your photos and videos. If you've got any videos, that would be great too. Right, guys, you take care. I'll see you again next time.